Hello everybody and welcome back to the G-Rated Family Gaming Channel. I just wanted to do a little tutorial for you guys uh, to show you a little bit how to do the 360 videos. I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you do those 360 videos? Uh, just kind of wondering if they can do it re with a regular camera or exactly how it's done. And I am going to go over that for you guys today. Uh, exactly what I use is a Kodak 4K. Uh, this is the SP360. This is what I use. There are other supported types. Uh, usually what you're going to end up with is uh, one camera on one side, one camera on the other side, and then some sort of stitching software to stitch the video together, or sometimes you will also have cameras that automatically have stitching built in. So the first steps you may be able to skip in this video if it has automatic stitching built into the cameras that you've got. But the key is you have to have a special sort of camera. These cameras each have like a wide angle lens that actually go over 180 degrees for each of them. Uh, so both of them are covering the full range of 360 in each direction. And then what you have to do is use the stitching software to put both of those videos together to make it a full 360 video and then you have to inject some metadata with this special program and then upload it to YouTube. So we're going to start with that process. Uh, we've already recorded some of the 360 video so what we're going to do is go over here to the PixPro 360 stitch program and this is just the one that is for the cameras that we have uh, you will probably you know depending on the camera setup that you have you might not need uh, any stitching software or you will probably have some different stitching software. It could depend, uh, you know, uh, mileage may vary on this part, but basically what we're going to do here is I'm going to open the files and I am going to run this stitching software. Uh, so from here, what I'm going to do is I open up two files and then you can sync them. I do the audio sync thing and then it actually puts the videos together and there's some manual effort that you can do if you want to or if the stitching isn't right, but the way it does it automatically is pretty good for this system. So I'm going to find those files. We're going to browse. Basically, what you want to do is make sure you have a system. Uh, so this is a set of files from one camera. So that is from one angle, and we've got a couple videos on that side. And then we've got a couple videos from this side. So one on one file is going to match with one on the other file. So make sure you kind of upload these in the same sort of order. So I'm going to pull this one from this and then in the next file we're going to click on this one and number one so this will check if they match whether or not and awesome we got to check so those match for a good stitching program so let's click OK okay so we've got the family here at the water park uh, I'm going to click on audio sync just to get the videos uh, so that they are synced up really well usually uh, depending on how you started they start at the same time sometimes you have to manually push the button to start both the cameras so it could uh, you know again mileage may vary depending on the camera setup that you have but uh, this is doing an automatic audio sync to get the files to sync up together and as you can see, the frames that are lining up uh, have shifted over just one, you know, frame there. So it's it's not too bad. They pretty much lined up. But now now you've got this uh, where you can look around. Usually, if you're recording the camera when you're pushing the buttons and you're starting it automatically, you're going to have some stuff that's uh, a little bit out of line. So if you want to do some manual alignment. Also, again, this depends on the program that you're using. You can pull it out and you can do some manual alignment, but uh, I think this is probably pretty good. You've got them stepping out of one image, so there's going to be definitely a line there in your stitching software, depending on what you've got, uh, but usually that's kind of standard. So now that we've got our two files picked out, what we're going to do is come over to export and we are so I don't want to upload to YouTube yet uh, I mean this is basically what we're doing here in this uh, I'm going to save it to a certain location okay so we've got the file saved to a certain location we've got the output size make sure this matches what the input size is uh, this is exactly what I've got for uh, my camera setup so and we do want the audio track uh, I may remove that in post editing later which we can do and we're going to show you as a part of this process but we can all we can edit all of these videos in Premiere Pro uh, there's other editing software that you can use but you may deal with certain sort of issues uh, in those editing software so what we're going to do now is okay and we're going to do the whole stitching process and this may take a little bit of time uh, so this is going to take a while and we're going to uh, speed forward here to the end and we'll show this whole process and injecting the metadata and uploading it onto YouTube when we are done with this. Okay, so now I've got all of my videos stitched together. I've got, I think, about seven different videos. So I am here in Adobe Premiere Pro uh, CC 2017. This is what I'm using right now. Okay, so you can import media here. You can drag it in there, I believe, or you can just go file. So I'm going to go file, import, and I'm going to find, let's see, we're going to the top. We're going to 
WP360, and so I've got P1 Part 1 through Part 7, so I'm going to pull all of those in, and then what I'm going to do basically is pull them over here and pull them into the sequence, and then get them basically lined up, because there's a part, bunch of parts in, in, in there where you can see me basically pushing the buttons, like after I press record, and all sorts of stuff like that, so, and, and turning the, the stuff off, so I want to edit all that stuff off, and there's like waiting in lines and different stuff, so you can actually edit these videos, it looks a little weird, so you kind of have to go off of the audio, and it, it takes a little bit to kind of get used to what everything you're, that you're seeing, uh, but later to make it work in 360 in YouTube, we are going to inject some metadata with a different program. So now that we've got all of this uploaded here, so let's see, I'm going to grab part one first, and then after that, you know, part two, part three, part four, and part five. Okay, so now that we've taken all these files and we've dragged them over here in order, part one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, uh, now we can zoom in and go to the individual clips and start uh, basically doing our cutting and deleting of different parts. Uh, so. I'm basically assuming that you have some basic knowledge of uh, a Premiere Pro and how to do editing of normal videos. So doing a 360 video is very similar to that. Uh, I can do some uh, basic editing tutorials in a different video. Uh, but yeah, like to zoom in and zoom out. And then you also want to know that like this is the razor tool and this is where you can actually find the spots where you want to cut the video and then you can go pick that video and you can delete it and then you can shift these files over that's basically how it works like most video editors okay so I'm gonna use this snipping tool and I'm just gonna cut this just the way we would normally cut any sort of video and then highlight those and delete those and then you know you, you can take the whole thing and just drag it over back to the front so now you can see that this is where you know it's, it's gonna start in the video and this is going through video one it's basically us starting to walk up the stairs uh, there's there's other parts in the video so you can actually cut and splice and move different pieces over so I don't know if I want to start the video necessarily with uh, us just kind of walking up the stairs but uh, we'll find some fun clips we'll put that in the beginning at this point we're just doing basic video editing uh, so we will like I said we're gonna do a different video for that so I'm gonna go through I'm gonna find all the parts I want to cut out uh, generally probably for me uh, I'm gonna cut out kind of a little bit in the beginning and the end of each of these clips and then delete those and then shift them all over and then after I get that done then we will move on to the next step. Okay, so now I have finished this whole editing process. I've cut down parts of the video. I've basically cut down a lot of pieces and kind of got rid of all the, you know, non-action and boring parts and then cut it down to about eight minutes. I've also imported some music and then put some music in there and then you can go and click on the music and you can change basically uh, the volume of the music uh, from up here. I would right click do the audio gain and I just changed it to like minus 25 dB and that was uh, a good audio level for the video that I was trying to create. So this is uh, fully edited and we're ready to go do the export. So I go to file and then I go to export and then I go to media and I save it onto my local file. Okay, so we've matched the input dimensions. We've got 3840 by 1920. So you want to make sure the output basically is matching the source. Uh, information. If you guys end up getting like a 1080p or scaling it down, then it's not going to look right. So you want to make sure that you have the 4K, like the same input source uh, resolution. So now I'm going to export this and send this to the WP360 folder. All right, now that we have saved the file, we've called it final one, and I have saved it onto this folder. What we want to do now is actually grab this file and inject metadata. So first, in order to do that, you're going to want to get this spatial metadata injector. You can get it for Mac. You can get it for Windows. I will send the link there in the description. So look in the description for the link to this. You want to download this program. It is perfectly safe. I have downloaded it before. There is one for the Mac. There is one for the Windows. Uh, so depending on what you have, download uh, the version that you need. So get this metadata injector and then we're going to go open that and show you how to use it. You know, we've created a desktop icon for the spatial metadata injector. I'm going to double click on this. Okay, now that you've got this spatial metadata injector opened up, you want to click on open to open the file. And then we're going to navigate over here to final dash one. That is the video that we want. My video is spherical 360. Make sure this is checked. Usually it'll get checked automatically, but if not, you want to make sure you check it. Then click on inject metadata. And then what you're going to do, it's going to tell you where to save it. So I'm going to save it, save it as final one. What it does is automatically ends adds the underscore injected to the file. So I'm going to call it final one underscore injected. So we know that this is the one that is injected with the metadata. So we're going to click on save. And now that you're doing the saving, it's going to save that. It's going to through the process of injecting metadata into the file. And then uh, as soon as it's done, you can see it says successfully saved file to final underscore injected mp4. This may take a while depending on how long your 360 video is, so just be a little patient, give it some time, and wait for it to say successfully save the file onto, fine, on, onto that location. 
And now at this point, you can see in this folder, we've got this uh, video that we created. It's the injected video file. So this is actually what we're going to want to upload into YouTube. In the process of injecting all of that metadata into the file, that makes it so that YouTube knows this is a 360 video and it's going to process it in a certain way so that people can actually view it in the 360 degrees. So now is the easy part. We go into our YouTube channel. We come up here to upload. What I recommend is go to uh, scheduled. And what you want to do is I think it's better to just schedule the video and then make sure it's processed and then check it out and watch it yourself and make sure all the 360 stuff is working before you go public so come in here and then you click the file all right now we are clicking on this file right here that we created and that's it you go and you upload it's going to take a while to upload and then it's going to take even longer to process after that a little bit longer than a normal video then come in here just do your title you know uh, water park 360 put everything in the description get your tags and everything just like a normal video that you're going to upload and then i recommend after it is done with the processing give it a little bit more time go in there watch it on your mobile device watch it on a desktop make sure that the whole 360 effect is working and it should if you've done everything correctly if you've edited the video the way you're supposed to if you've injected the metadata that it needs then everything should work just fine so that is how you edit a 360 video how you set it up for uploading onto YouTube and how you upload it onto YouTube now if you guys go to my channel you can see that I've got this water park 360 degree video you can actually go and check it out and move the camera around and if you're in desktop there should be little arrows in the upper left corner to help you kind of move the camera angle and see all around the video I hope that has been helpful for you guys please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more entertainment and tutorials and other stuff in the future.